Welcome to the FBC Blanchard Podcast. We appreciate you tuning in today. We also thank you for any comments, likes, suggestions that you may leave on this site. Also, feel free to share this with any of your friends or church members so that they can keep up with our events too. Here we go. And welcome back. Hey, this is Joe Prater. We are here, me and Brother Clay again, for another podcast. We are... uh, moving forward in his his talking and uh, speaking we about uh, Sunday morning was near by 9 uh, verses 9 through 15 in that area and talking about some different things uh, if you were here Sunday morning then you'll remember some of the some of the stuff if you weren't then he'll give you a little bit of an overview uh, brother Clay how are you man I'm doing well thanks for asking good good long week uh, uh, it's a good week. We started our planning for 2022 calendar and kind of the different things of, uh, you know, kind of when we want to have a revival here, when we want to do a few different things. So uh, just a good time of planning. How are you? What's going on in your world? Good. Uh, busy as always. We uh, Everybody's getting ready for the holiday season. Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, time to reflect on it. Um, trying not to skip over a complete holiday to get to some of our favorite times of the year, right. uh, Christmas, between all the lights and the different things. And then plus, you know, I, I look at it as a big time to celebrate as far as what, what God's done for us. It was a, a representation of when he sent his son, baby Jesus was born, mm-hmm. and then uh, grew to be a man and then eventually died for us. So it's kind of a, a big time. You it's- know, we're receiving a lot of gifts during this time of year, and, and right. spiritual as well as, as physical. And it's just a good time to reflect on family and reflect on where we've been for the year and get ready for the new year, um, those kinds of things. Good deal. That's kind of what I was doing the early part of my morning this morning was uh, not, um, you know, been in Nehemiah for a while, but I know probably this will be the last week of Nehemiah for a good little season of time because I'll get into Thanksgiving the next week. And uh, Lord's already kind of putting a, a message on my heart and was looking at that this morning, then jumped into Nehemiah a little bit for a while. And, and uh, you know, because, yeah, after this, you know, this probably, just so our listeners will know, this Sunday might be the last of Nehemiah till, uh, till the first of the year because you have Christmas and we need about, yeah. you know, probably two or three weeks of messages about Christmas leading in to get our, our mind ready and get, get ready for Christmas and all that. So... That, this could be our last one for this year, and uh, yeah. we're just sitting on chapter nine. So you know, we were before it started, we were talking about, hey, what are we going to do, or what, what exactly? And um, in case y'all don't know, there's sometimes very little planning that goes on to these conversations, right? And we kind of go with it, but but one thing that we've talked about in the past is is how they refer to the old scriptures and how you just mentioned uh, before we came on. Uh, this podcast, we were, you were kind of talking about how the scriptures are, are reflected in other scriptures and how everything mm-hmm. refers back to different parts. And, mm-hmm. and you know, all this of the season coming up, all of the Christmas stuff, all of the, uh, the times where Jesus was born and, and the, the things that were going to happen, it's all reflected in the old scripture as well, even to the point that some of the people here probably had some know how or know of what was coming or what was promised of God, but uh, later on in other other books of the Bible, it becomes more and more evident as it gets closer to the time without any messages uh, or without any, um, I wouldn't call them, I guess they're messages from God through the different prophets and different things uh, before Jesus was actually born. So, Yeah, I uh, do like that, how, um, you know, Something I've learned a while back was, well, for a long time now, but just kind of makes it clear that Scripture interprets Scripture. And um, all this intertwining is from a lot of history. You know, we we hate, or I guess that's a strong word, we don't really like learning history. We don't like going back into history. We like living in, in the now. And that's really what happened here in Nehemiah. They're going back to what happened to their fathers. They were remembering and confessing sin of their fathers, going back and going, man, how did we end up in captivity? Man, thank you, Lord, for, you know, getting us out of captivity. What, what brought us there? And so they're, they're reflecting and remembering 
you know, this this uh, chapter nine, they're just kind of looking back, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Right. And what's so amazing are these um, teachers, Nehemiah, um, um, Ezra, they, they knew that scripture backwards and forward. They knew the word of God um, so clear. And uh, I think that's why you see in, in New Testament, Old Testament, where they're quoting Moses, the things that happened, because they're looking back, but we're looking forward. They were looking forward. They were looking to Messiah. You know, we have the whole book. We know the Messiah's come. Like you said, talking about Christmas. Right, we've got, we've got the end of the story. Yeah. 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 It was or all the middle of the story. We don't know the end of the story yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, one of the other things that I, I kind of look at is whenever we're looking at, and you're going over this, some of the things that hit me are the fact that, uh, you and you've already kind of talked to it in the, the different things. It says you came down, you made known, you. And he's referring to, to God made known, and God revealed all these things. Whenever we go and, and you talk about having to trust, and the, the people here had to trust that Nehemiah was leading in the, in the right direction. Right. Um, and then he asked them to put their trust in God. Well, one of the things that's sometimes hard is whenever you come in somewhere and you're like, well, why, why do I need to trust you? Why? Mm-hmm. If you were to come to me and say, hey, look, I've got this great plan. You just have to trust me. Well, tell me why. Tell me why to trust you. And what Nehemiah has done here, it, and like I said, you've said everybody interprets things differently, but he's proving why we need to trust what God says. You know, he delivered those from from the uh, Pharaoh and, and different things. He he delivered them across the sea, and he, he brought them across the dry ground. He he says he would take care of them. He uh, give them guidance in Exodus with, I know you you talked touched on with the clouds and and the uh, the covering of uh, keeping the beating sun off of them during the day, and they would follow the cloud, and and then you know at night they would have the fire in the sky to kind of follow. Well, if he led this many people, you know, why do we trust him now? Well. They trusted him. He's already proven why to trust him. Now, why don't we just trust him and be enthusiastic about it uh, whenever we move forward? Which you, we learned about the enthusiasm this morning. It, it, it's a, a inside thing, but it's in God. Be enthusiastic. Be be in God with this and say, "Hey, so excited about what's going to happen." Uh, kind of like in the church. I'm so excited about what's coming forward just from the little things they've talked about in the calendar and different stuff. Everyone, you can just feel it and you can just feel the presence of God with the staff and with the people here and in all the services. Mm-hmm. If you haven't been to a service lately, just in the past week or two has had a totally different atmosphere. Um with the services as far as the people seeing some new faces, seeing others come in, and we've already seen just in a few weeks, growth in the youth and the children and, and in here. And, and look, I don't think we're asking for people to come to church just to come to church. We're asking for people to come to church because we love them and we want them to understand why we trust God and to be enthusiastic about it and to do everything that would be for the Savior. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you just threw me a softball, There's your ball, slow man. pitch you, you if you want to. You threw me a, a, a good softball. And um, um, you, know, you, you said something. You said, why should the people trust Nehemiah? Why should they trust Ezra? Why should they trust this? That's where I think he's pulling this out and showing them because he's talking to the people. He he says this in verse 6, 7, and 8. You alone are the Lord. Verse 7, you are Lord God. Verse 8, for you are righteousness. All he's saying is this, Joe. What, what God's done in the past is he will once again do in the future. What God's already done, he's been faithful in the past. He'll be faithful in the future. That applies to them in this context, but it applies to us today. Think back in our life. This whole message was about remembrance. We need to remember what? God loves us. I kind of built more and more on that. God loves us. So if he loved us in the past, he's going to love us in the future. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Even when things seem like they're going to pieces and chaos and, you know, think, you know, 
um, I, I was reading, and I don't know if it was the one that we read, the devotion or another uh, devotion I'm reading. Um, God's in it all. He's he's in he's in um, in the blessing, and he's in the curse. How is that? How, I don't understand that. How how does he bless in obedience, and how does he bless in disobedience? Well, he blesses in obedience through faithfulness, those good things, those, you know, when we're faithful, he's good to reward us and all those things. But you know what? When we're disobedient, he's faithful to reward us there too. You know what it is? Chastisement. He's there to spank us when we mess up. A good father, a loving father, that's what he does. He corrects his children. And even in obedience and disobedience, God is faithful and he's there. And he blesses in both of those. Because if, you know, when we mess up, he's there to correct us. If he wasn't there even in that, you know what he'd let us do? He'd let us go. Right. I'm thankful. And we need to be thankful, even in the times where it feels like God's spanking us or um, that there's punishment. Because, you know, there's punishment for sin. There's punishment for disobedience. Um, you know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Well, there's, so. there's examples all throughout the Bible of people that become disobedient to God, or they, they lose focus of what God has in store for them, or they become impatient as to what God desires of their life. Uh, we can go through the the big characters just for for those of y'all that only remember the Sunday school characters. You, you know Abraham, uh, David, uh, all those all all those major players in here at once disobeyed. And and some people are like, oh, how could God ever love me after the things I've done? How could how could I ever have that that grace of you know that God allows us to have? Well, man, some of these guys were murderers. Some of these guys were were the worst of the worst, and and they were the ones that are very similar to to politicians or whatever you may say or whatever you think. You know, look at David, the things that he went through between the adultery and the murdering of of the uh, the Bathsheba and Uriah, right? Of mm-hmm. the the husband, you know, the different things. Look at all those. Look at Abraham. He didn't. He didn't want to wait for what God had in store for him and his wife, so he took another. I mean, so many times in the Bible that or this is portrayed and this is put out there, and people that and, and all it comes down to is did they trust God like they were telling others to trust God, and did they lose sight of that trust? Moses lost sight of the trust. He he did went out on his own instead of just saying, Hey, you know. God saying, "Hey, I got this. Just, just go along with me for a minute." You know, I think of this one, man: Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yep, they were in the will of God. They were, you know, they were in slavery. Yep. they were in uh, Babylon. You know, they were drug off into slavery. But man, when when the king says, when I he built that big statue and said, "Hey, bow down and worship it," they said, "Hey, even if." Our God doesn't save us. I ain't bowing down to your statue, right? Because they knew that God had been faithful to them in all this, and they ain't going to about start breaking. And you know what? What he do? He went out there, got the, the furnace hotter than it had ever been before. The guys died. Some of them even walking up to it and all right. this. And he put those three guys in it. And God was faithful. He was with them even in the fire. There were even four in, in the in fire, the, not three. That's right. And and even. I mean, even Nebuchadnezzar realized, oh my goodness, there's four in the fire. How are they not dying? And when they came out unburnt, didn't even smell like smoke, and only three faithful. came out, That's that, that tells you, okay. He's faithful in the fire. That's it. He's faithful in the refining. Because, man, that's what, that's what a lot of these things are, Joe. They're just <laughs> refining. They're getting the old us out of the way. So God can use us, God can speak through us, and then we can minister to others through that refining process. And and that's what a lot of this um, is talking about, you know. So this is it's a good time of remembrance. You know, they were an impression, their fathers, they were in, in different circumstances and what happened. And uh, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit, Joe, because most of our uh, listeners... Uh, we're here on Sunday morning, but may had some kind of different circumstance or right. family event or something where they couldn't come back Sunday night. And uh, I shared with you and Kenzie is is basically almost when I walked up towards the pulpit right before I went into the sanctuary, the Lord gave me three P's that went along with this um, 
with this sermon. The first one's personal. Uh, the second is protector, and the third one was provider. We we saw in here that that even through this affliction, all through the signs and the wonders against all the people, the, all that kind of stuff, everything that was going on in this prayer, everything that was going on in uh, Exodus, and everything that was going on um, that that that, that uh, Nehemiah was going back and looking at the Red Sea, the um, the, the stuff with Pharaoh, all that kind of stuff, showed me that God's personal. He's personal. God loves us. Um, that whole message resounded, you know, that day that He loves us, how much He loves us, and, and all those different things. So we see, even through affliction of their fathers, when they cried out for help, signs and wonders, all those things were there because God is a personal God. He wants an intimate, personal relationship with you and me. And you that are listening out there today, that's what he wants. He wants a personal relationship. He shows and improves himself over and over again that he's faithful, that he's there, he's in your corner. He, he, he's personal to us, and so we need to re- remember that. And then you, you look on and you go down even for, further in verses like 11, 12, and stuff like that, and you divided the sea before them so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, uh, and their persecutors you threw into the deep. Um, it, it just talks about all that, how he he was uh, their protector. Even through all those things, you led them by day with a with a cloudy pillar. You uh, you know gave them the fire by night to, uh, to to give them light on the road which they uh, which they were traveling. You came down from Mount Sinai. So all those different things, even in those laws and ordinances where it talks about in you know verse thirteen and fourteen and all that. He's our protector. God protects us from from those different things. You know, I use that analogy of Annalise with a with a cell phone. Um, we we do the same thing. We we're our, we protect our children who are, mm-hmm. that we love. You know, I went to her her baseball game, her softball game on on Monday night. Um, I didn't think the referee was or the umpire behind the plate was doing a really good job of calling balls and strikes. That's my baby. I can't help but you know kind of holler a little bit. Hey, <laughs> that ain't a strike, you know? Or hey, that's that's a ball, you know? Because right. why? I, I I protect my my kids, my my oldest one, my middle one. You know, I remember my mom always taught me this. I remember my mom saying this a lot. You might can mess with me, but you're just not going to mess with my babies. And that's a lot of us. And that's kind of maybe I'm, I'm stretching that one here, but but God protects his children. Mm-hmm. He loves us. What did he do with those Pharaoh and, and those soldiers that were coming at? They were coming to kill him. Right. And what did God do? He threw them in the deep of the sea, and he took care of all those folks, and they weren't to bother them again. So, you know, God is he, He's personable. He's personal to us. He's our provider, um, I mean our protector, and that leads me into the third one. He is our provider. You look all through there, you may know t- to them the Sabbath. I, I need to skip down to 15. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger, and you brought them water out of the rock for their thirst, and you told them to go and possess the land which you had sworn to give them. So he provides. He provides for our every need. He provided food for them when they were out there in the wilderness. There was no food. He provided water for them. Man, we we read he a rock. <laughs> he told Moses, "Take your rod, walk over to that rock, strike it, and water will come out." Right. That's a pretty much of a, a a provider out of nothing. Right. He makes something. And you know what, Joe? In our lives, he takes nothing and he makes them into something. He says that our righteousness, our best days before we knew Christ. Or like filthy rags, and so He provides salvation for us. It's a free gift. We we talk about that a lot here. That salvation is a free gift for anybody who would receive it. And He may even provided a way for us to go to heaven. He provided for us that bread of life. He provided us that living water. And you know what? He's promised us a land. This isn't our home. You know, we're only here for a short season of time. But, man, he said, if I go away and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, you will be there also. So he's already provided a land for us, a promised land. We want to think it's here. You know, um, I, I love to uh, my house at Attaway. Um, but, you know, we'll be careful with this one. One day I'm going to retire probably. 
And um, I don't I'm trying to be careful here. I don't see myself retiring in Blanchard. I have a home back home that I love. It was my 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 grandfather's home place. It right. was my dad's home place. Right. It's my home place. Uh, it's it's home to me. Um, I, I you know so. Uh, God's even provided in that, even a place right. to retire one day. God has a plan and a purpose for all of us, yeah. and he's going to provide for us. You know why? Because the whole message boiled down to this one thing. He loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He loves the sinner. He loves the folks that you know aren't listening to this podcast today. He loves um, the folks that are listening. He, he, he wants that personal, intimate relationship with him. So. Right. Yeah, and... It's kind of, <clears throat> you know, we always look at it as our, he is our heavenly father. And, and as fathers and as parents, you know, we, we provide for our children. We protect our children. Amen. Uh, we try to have a personal relationship with our children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the end, with, from their obedience, he, he presented them with the land that they were promised. Mm -hmm. Now, not all of them were given the land because... They didn't. They weren't obedient in the times where he wanted them obedient. Right. Um, but he still, in the times of disobedience for anyone, he still provides. He still is there. He still as a as a uh, very strong part of the life of that individual. And then he also offers the forgiveness mm -hmm. and the grace and, and yeah. things moving forward. You know, gracious and merciful, merciful, slow to anger, all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's getting into the some of the most famous things of what God is. I say most famous. Some, attributes. some of the more more common attributes that we know of are coming up in those mm -hmm. probably this next week. Mm -hmm. um, so next week's I think really good because this week's talking about how God is are those things has been those things in the past to them. This personal God. This protector God, this provider God. I'm kind of giving you a little bit on what, what is coming someday. Yeah. But, you know, that talks about who he was. Now it's going to talk about who the people are. And so I'm not going to give away any more. Right. It's, it, it's it, kind it, of the culmination <laughs> of, of everything that's been happening for a while. It'll end that little, that little subsection of Nehemiah will be complete as it moves forward into the next one. But it, yeah, it tells... It's just a wonderful prayer. This is how we are to pray. We are to remember, you know, prayer of thanksgiving. We are to thank God for who He is in our life. Thank Him for all the things that He's done in our life, how He has protected us, how He is um, our provider. We are to be thanking Him for all that. And then we need to confess our sin over to Him and uh, to understand that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He's faithful and just to watch over and protect us. So... Uh, we just don't need to slip back into those. No. <laughs> those. Yeah. It, so if you can't be here Sunday, be sure you follow us online. Be patient with us as we have some um, circumstances that are beyond our control as far as the internet oh, and internet. different things. Oh, goodness. Uh, if you live in Blanchard, you've probably <laughs> experienced that a lot of your life since the invention of the internet. But hey, it's getting better. We're we're uh, we're working with a company. We've got a a person that's really trying to work with yeah, us and Brandon's doing a good job and uh, trying to get that situated for us outside of here. But um, so good reason to uh, be come here. On in. Be here. If you can be here, uh, if you're working is, or anything like that, sweet. we understand it, it's as you know, a lot of us have jobs that requires to work on Sunday mm -hmm. to be a provider for our family. That's right. So we got baptisms, baptism Sunday. Yeah, man, yeah. one just one right now. Well, uh, possibly, um, maybe well, we have we have three that came down um, two weeks ago, and then one more. So potentially four. It's like you said, just hard to kind of get them worked in with right. people's schedules and stuff like that. But man, but a baptism. We yeah. talked about that this morning too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in passing, talking about the representation of it's a it's a commandment or that God said you know that we need to do, and we die in our old life and raised to walk in newness of life mm -hmm. with Him. And, right. and it's very important. And a lot of people don't put that as an important part, but it is a commandment. It is something that He's asked us to do. And yeah, it may just be a representation, but there's a... It's kind of funny how you can see a physical change in someone. I mean, it's almost like they just look different. They walk different and talk different and everything. And it's just a, a great way to 
to say, here I am, God, I'm all, you know, well, you, yours. You, you see that kind of, you know, I know we've heard this term a lot in the church life, but it's, it is a first sign of obedience. They, yeah. they went down, they made a confession, a profession to say that they were going to do something. Now they're saying, hey, I'm willing to follow it through. Now the next step, if you take you know Matthew twenty eight nineteen and twenty, which you're all over right now, um, the next part for them is to disciple, and, and right. I take that serious, and I know a lot of people in our church do too. That it's not just to you know catch them and um, you know say hey we caught you know twenty fish this weekend. Da da da. What did you did you did you uh, fillet them out? Did you skin them? What did you do with them? Nah, I just left them in the ice chest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to you want to. For a, an analogy like that, you want to catch them in order to feed others, mm-hmm. and and we want to support those. So it, it's real important that I, it's important that we're here for those that are being baptized. Mm-hmm. You know, not all of them have all of their families here, but we always make it a special point. If if you have a child being baptized, it's a very important part of someone's life. And so as their church family that they're coming into, we should be here to support them in that as well. I am glad you're saying that because, see, when we have these folks saved and, and seeing them have this life change experience and some things happen to them. So I'm asking, if you're listening today and you're willing to disciple um, another person that's starting to be, um, you know, have this life changing experience and you can poor, um, you know, just love on them. I'm not saying you have to know everything in the Bible. I'm just saying that you want to walk with them and encourage them to keep standing strong in their faith. Maybe once a week, reaching out with a phone call, once a week, reaching out with a text. Um, you know, I'm not saying every day to even send a scripture, but help, help them grow. Uh, take them under your wing and bring them to your Sunday school class and introduce them to the teacher and stuff like that. If you're willing to do that, and please give me a call this week here at the office at 929-2346 or uh, email me, something like that, because um, I have one of these ladies that, that were uh, saved during during uh, Steve Carrier being here, and they hear the gospel and got saved due to the gospel. Um, they need somebody to mentor them. They need somebody to just kind of walk, walk the weeds with them, help them in this journey. So if you're willing to do that, I, I really need some help. And on this one, uh, this week it's it's a female. So I need a female, um, to, to walk through with, with them. And says that's the way discipleship works. It's men, uh, discipling men and women, discipling women and helping those folks. So anybody out there willing, I'm, I, I need you. So, yeah. So, and then also come by the, you know, come by the church office, visit with Andrew, Tracy, Kirk, um, Clay, Sam, Dale, you know, if you want to drop off a tithe, come see Renee. <laughs> um, but but come visit with any of them, and any, anybody that's here, and they'd, they'd love to visit with you, and they'd love to talk about it. And if you're one of those that's even on the fence, you know, they're not sure, hey, I don't know about trusting this Jesus fella, or I don't know about trusting this God thing. I, I don't know how that plays into my life. That's also here. At any point, any of the staff members would drop what they're doing and, and be there for you and um, provide you with that guidance. So, Amen. That's good. Yeah. You, we were to wrap up? Yeah, let's put I think we are. We've been going for, for about today. 25 minutes or that's so. Good. That's good. Um, if you're listening to this on the way to work, have fun at work. Amen. If you're not, then uh, have fun the rest of your day, and, and don't forget to put God wherever you are in your day and, and uh, be enthusiastic about it and be be mindful going forward that, that you're a representation of, of God's people and, and make sure that that's seen in your actions. Amen. Now, we know you're not perfect, but do what you can and uh, and move forward with it from there. You want me to pray us out? Let's do it. Father God, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you give us ears to hear. Lord, we want to hear what it is that you have to say to us. God, give us a heart to receive the message. And then, Lord, give us the... Uh, just the willpower, the want to to obey what it is that you have us to do. And that requires the Holy Spirit moving and speaking and, and, and God just doing something uh, supernatural and special in our lives. So, Father, we need you to move in a mighty way today in us and through us so we can be your hands and feet here on this earth. God, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
and thank you for joining us on the First Baptist Church Blanchard podcast today. Uh, Please follow us, like us, so you can be notified when the new episodes come out. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave those below. Also, if there's any way we could pray for you, please contact us. Let us know, 318-929-2346. Or also, you can catch us at www.fbcblanchard.com. Go to the contact page. You'll find all the info you need. Thank you again. We're praying for you. You have a blessed day.